del indio we're driving on route two because it appears that it's right here on the highway cara del indio the face of the indian the taino indian we've driven on this road multiple times and we've never seen it so let's see if we can find it feet, arrive at la cara del indio taino again we're following a different map and it's telling us a convoluted way to get there but perhaps it'll be on this side of the highway despite the fact that GPS told us it was on the other side of the highway so according to this we're going 1.5 kilometers to Calle Marinal but the Cara should be right here on the right coming up at this intersection where it says Isabella. So I don't know why she's having us go in a circle. I would say we just get into this lane here. This one? Yes, yeah, so let's go get off. into the turn lane. Is that it there? Bienvenido. Ah, we found it! Ah, we found it! <laughs> there it is! Wow, here it is, Caradel Indio. Don't know why it's here, or when it was, when it was done, but uh, it's quite interesting. And there's a little cave here too, so I guess we'll have to do a little research on figuring out why this is here, who put it here. And there's a little cave here. Not like the other caves we've been in. Doesn't go back very far, but uh, interesting nonetheless. These are ruins from one of the first 10 villages in Puerto Rico. This was founded from the modern age of about 1733. And uh, they, in the 1990s, they excavated this and sort of restored it as a little historic site here. So it's uh, something interesting here, just on the outskirts of uh, Isabella. You can get in today. There's a little visitor center. Don't know why we can't get in today, because it's Wednesday. But, uh, you know, you just never know. Usually Monday and Tuesday things are closed. Here, this place is closed on Wednesday and what are some other days. All right, so I saw a little sign here, handwritten, that uh, it's only open on Saturdays and Sundays. So you can get a little fence. But, oh well, I guess we don't need to get any closer than this. This is good. <laughs> I love the pilot. It's the Arecibo Lighthouse and Historical Park. And pirate. Shockingly in English. So, uh... <laughs> Let's go in. <laughs> well, we're not going into the lighthouse because the lighthouse is, is actually more than just the lighthouse. There's sort of an amusement park, some sort of aquarium, maybe a pool here. But the, uh, to us, the cost was uh, it's $12 a person. And uh, what is it for kids? For kids 2 to 12, it's uh, $10. And uh, for, what, for what we were looking for, just to see the historical lighthouse, that's a little bit. Uh, that's a little bit too much. What do you think? Well, I think we could probably drive around the other side. Keep driving on the road. We'd probably have a view of the historical lighthouse for free. I mean, if I had kids, I would go if there. If you have kids, I think you should bring them to the Odyssey World Lighthouse. It would be a great afternoon for them. There's a. There seems to be a really cool boat, and there's a little water park, and there's a museum, and there's an aquarium. But 
we're geezers. We just want to see a lighthouse. <laughs> You're a geezer. Speak for yourself. I'm a geezer, and Bob is um, not 40. working anymore. Yeah, permanently. <laughs> So we're gonna go see if we can sneak around and see the lighthouse. I just saved myself uh, 24 hours. <laughs> so the charging mission, we don't know what they're charging. So supposedly this thing says an unforgettable experience in English. So uh I guess we're gonna go see what they're charging. See whether we're willing to pay that. Here's Bob, being himself at the Cueva del Indio. All right, so I said left to the cave and right to the arches. So I think we're gonna start with the cave first. That's great. Yeah. Wow. you can see this on video but this thing goes down a long 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 ways wow that's pretty cool and there's a couple of those holes around here there's that one so we're making way around to this one wow person down there i don't know how actually how they got down there but Yeah, he is. <laughs> Here's one of the arches over here. And that is the cueva. At least I'm making our way down. Army. Right up here. Wow, look at that. Look at the color of that water. I don't know about this one. Climbing up into the cueva. Cueva del Indio. This young woman was smart enough not to do it. I, I may choose to use the same judgment. There goes Bob. It just rains, so things may be too slippery. You know, this is the Cueva right here. I mean, you don't have to be in it to see it. You realize that, right? Yeah, and just what I want is to be in another cave because I had such a great experience the last time. You can uh, supposedly crawl through this and they get in a little further, but uh, we're having a little problem getting the first step going into here. But maybe, particularly because of shoe selection, maybe we'll have to come back with uh, different shoes at some point. What do you, time? What do you think? We'll have to think about that. We don't even know what's in there once you get in, by the way. <laughs> this is what's in there. It's all of this in there. So we've gotten to see it. Yeah. And we've been inside a big caverna. Yeah. Already. So I'm fine. Okay. Just walking up this barren, jaggedy rock. There's no real path. There's no real direction on where we're going. <laughs> you just said, take a right. So we took a right. But Wow. Whew. Look at that. Incredible. Ah. Is Lisa making a way across?
another one, and this massive, massive Christopher Columbus statue down here. I don't know how close we can get to that. Oh my gosh, it's incredible. We were just up there, we didn't really realize we were only sitting on, uh, walking on top of an arch. Although obviously not gonna probably not gonna go on the water here. But uh, it's really, really interesting. To love those lounge chairs. Check it out. There's an invisible Taino Indian here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, here in the parking lot of the uh Cueva del Indio, some really nice art on this abandoned building. And uh, of course, it's uh, nicely painted here for the baños. It's not completely abandoned. Nope, it has the baños. baños. We'll see what the baños look like. Yes, oh, here they go. The baños are porta potties. So. Oh. <laughs> so here's this massive statue of Christopher Columbus uh, here um, outside of Arecibo. I mean, it's. It's beautiful, beautiful, but uh, this obviously is a parking lot, but unfortunately, as you can see, it's locked shut today, so don't understand uh, when you can come visit it, you know, what's inside of it, who built it, why they built it, but it's, uh, it's, it's, it's massive, it's just massive, and uh, it's, it's super interesting. But one more thing. We're going to have to look up from, uh, from our, today's trip. So this thing was originally built in 1991, uh, actually, and, uh, and then uh, moved here and, and sort of assembled here on this site in 2016 after several other sites in Puerto Rico, uh, things fell through on it. But it's uh, 360 feet high and a bronze statue and it's the, the tallest bronze statue in North America and uh, we have a person up there who's right at the base of it and I don't know how she got there. So this statue according to Wikipedia was originally designed by a Georgian sculptor by the name of Zurab Saratelli and he offered the birth of the new world to Baltimore, Fort Lauderdale, Miami Beach, New York City and Columbus, <laughs> Ohio but none of them accepted it considering it an eyesore. <laughs> Um, and they thought they didn't like the size of it or how it would affect their skylines. Amid its long search for a home, the statue gathered the derisive nicknames of Chris Kong, Robo Columbus, and from Russia with UG. <laughs> <laughs> but Puerto Rico took it, and here it is. Well, that was a really touristy day today. With mixed results, I'll have to say. The Cara del Indio was really pretty spectacular, but really hard to find. And Still, it's, it's, it's worth five minutes. <laughs> it's worth five minutes, and I'd really like to know why the heck it's there, who made it, and all kinds of stuff, which I will research and put below. The uh, the ruins were ruins. kind of a bust. I mean, they were fine. I'm glad we saw them, but I wouldn't really recommend you take your time to look for them. We're just glad we, we found them. But the Cueva del Indio, which came with the bonus pack of the seven arches, was pretty spectacular. And it made the whole day worth it. And the cost of that was uh, $10 a person. So it cost us 20 bucks to get into there. 20 bucks, and we were there a good hour and a half, I'd yeah. say. And yeah, and you could spend more time there, actually. I would have loved to go inside of that Cueva, but I just didn't really have the ability. <laughs> <laughs> but I got to see young people do it. and. You could see down into it, so it was pretty spectacular. You didn't have to be inside it to see how incredible it was. But all in all, it was a really fun, interesting day. And we ended it up at this wonderful little restaurant, drinking mojitos. The last thing we looked for was the Christopher Columbus statue, or Cristobal Colon, as they say here in Puerto Rico. And though that statue is really beautifully wrought, the story behind it is pretty comical. <laughs> and the fact that there's no parking and no way to go see it, no plaque and no explanation, which is so Puerto Rican, I guess I'd have to say. So we're going to do some research and leave that for you below, so please make sure you check the comments below so you can learn why all these really touristy things exist, because no explanation was out there today. None. Zero. Zero exclamation. But until next time, keep your suitcase messy.
And don't forget to subscribe to our channel and follow us on our future adventures. Hasta luego!